Hi, I'm Rusty Wise. And I'm Jermaine Gash. And today, Wise News Network is in Cherville, North Carolina, in the downtown area, and we're standing in front of Piedmont Lithium offices in Cherryville, mm -hmm. which houses their office and also their foundation office. Yes. Now, tonight, the city council voted to relinquish their ETJ. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were upset about that. Yes, they were. And some people were happy about that. Mm -hmm. uh, most it were in attendance tonight were not happy about that. And here are some of their reactions. I'm Dr. Dennis Beam, pastor of Anthony Grove Baptist Church. Uh, our property is across the street from the ETJ that they just relinquished. Um, I'm very disappointed in their decision. Uh, they could have maintained the ETJ, still um, approved anything that Lithium wanted. This wasn't really a vote, but what they have basically said is, is we, don't, we don't care if they build a chemical plant across the street from your church. I mean, the whole point of zoning is to control the growth so that you don't have industrial property adjacent to residential property. But they said, we're going to give it up. We're going to let Gaston County. They just passed the buck. But did you hear them say that in the meeting that they privately had met with Lithium? Throughout this process, city staff, as well as all of your officials, have met with Gaston County. We have met with Piedmont Lithium. We have talked to many citizens in Cherryville, Gaston County, and across this country. Um, and we would like to thank all of them for their involvement, their participation, and their insight in helping us to make this very tough decision. They hadn't privately meet with us. They didn't meet with the, the property owners that are adjacent to the property. This is all about the money. Is there has there been any private meetings with any landowners that you know of? None. Not, none of those people in there have, have been to Anthony Grove. We now, have 10 acres of land across the street. Like I said, they're going to build a chemical plant across the street from a daycare, a preschool, a church, a school, and that's just us. You know, there's a Hispanic congregation right across the street from us. Now, they say this, a four vote, is not necessarily a four for the mine. How do you feel about that? That's just a barefaced lie. Who knows what's going to happen? You know, they're going to be gone in 20 or 30 years. They might fail. They might um, pollute the creeks. There's no telling. I mean, there's a lot of really nice environment out here, the natural environment. Um, they just recently found a previous, previously unknown species of crawdads out there in those creeks so uh, if if something goes wrong it's going to go right into the creeks they could damage the wells and then uh, and they could be gone you know who knows what their uh, bond is i'm a member at anthony grove i live in Cherville. my grandson lives in Cherville, and my son lives in Cherville, and i have lots and lots of friends who i've known as long as i've lived here and I'm incredibly disappointed in our council for not caring more about the people here. I'm also concerned about not just not just our church, but our our families, our children, the daycare, the upcoming school that's being developed. And I'm just so disappointed and saddened that our our representatives in our town. I know some other things I would like to say, but I don't need to say them publicly. We also caught up with Councilwoman Jill Pewitt and Mayor H.L. Beam on tonight's vote. Well, I know in a lot of the things that we looked at and listened to was the other mining and I have friends that lives in Matthews where there's actual mining going across from one of their schools there they don't even know a mine is back there 
and there's also mining in Albemarle. But what is interesting about the new process and which we're finding out is better mining is once it comes out of the ground, you know, we were told it wouldn't even feel like a ripple effect. It's not a big blast. There's nothing going to rattle. You're not even going to feel it the way it's done now. You know, all I do is hope and pray that this will be the best thing that can happen for these folks too. And I know um, just like the mayor, he's got family that's right up, it, their property butts right up to all this also. And he still thinks it's a good idea. And we did the best, we made the best decision. I have asked people that have called me to please go and talk with the folks uptown and discuss and let them explain everything. But I've heard of no one going up there and even talking to them to get the facts of finding. And that's what we're supposed to do. So. Well, thank you, Jill Pewitt. Uh, I think y'all were trying to do the best for yeah. the citizens of Cherryville. We are, and what is best. And even with the water out there, you know, we're going to be running water lines out there. So we're trying to look out for every aspect of it. So, so you're thinking Cherryville will be able to supply the water to the mine? Yes. I know Gaston County says they can too, or we can. Um, we've got access to water from Cleveland County, Lincoln County, so it can be done. And, you know, I just wished a long, long time ago that Gaston County had done the countywide water like Cleveland and Lincoln County. These people wouldn't even have to be dealing with their whales and things and wouldn't have to worry about it. Hopefully that'll come. Maybe if we can get our commissioners to do that for us. Our decision was to send it to the county because they have everything in place as far as how many times a day they're going to blast, what days they'll blast, what the exemptions are. We don't have a per se mining ordinance. It's so vague that if they had come to us and presented their facts of finding and we went through the facts of finding, we would have no decision other than to relinquish mining to them because we have if they bring us the finding the facts we have nothing to conflict with that so we're letting gastonia handle that and so now i guess it's well, up county. to gaston county and the commissioners now would be the next governing local body to make the decisions correct that is correct it will go to the county commissioners and it's going to be on them and uh whether or not they decide I don't know whether the votes are there I think they have to have four votes for and I'm not sure they have them but who knows if the county commissioners turn them down they've still got the state they still got I know it's being talked about in Washington on the Senate floor from Senator Tom Tillis that they are asking what's going on with the lithium mine in Gaston County in North Carolina so it could be that it goes all the way to the top to the federal level so but in your opinion you think the council made the right decisions for the citizens of cherryville i really do i, th I most certainly think that was the correct decision that they made tonight mm -hmm. tonight we also spoke with piedmont officials and here's what they had to say I'm Erin Sanders. I'm Senior Vice President of Piedmont Lithium's Corporate Communications and Investor Relations. What do you think about the decision tonight? Well, obviously we're, we're pleased, um, but mostly with the fact that the city council members took the time to understand the project, understand what this relinquishment application meant, and, and decided it was the right thing to do. Um, what this does, as they said, it doesn't approve or deny the project. It just allows these five parcels to be part of a streamlined process with Gaston County. So the permitting process, how is that in its process right now as far as the permitting? is? How long is this process going to take or may take? Well, there are several lev levels of permitting. Um, this was one step in the local permitting process. We are currently um, awaiting the decision by the state about our state mining permit. If we receive that or once we receive it at some point, then we will be able to go to Gaston County and begin the process there. So um, we're looking at a, several months into next year, hopefully, 
Um, but we're just really pleased to have this step in the process uh, checked off. My name is Monique Parker. I'm the Senior Vice President of Safety, Environmental, and Health with Piedmont Lithium. And what do you think about the vote tonight as far as the ETJ relinquishment? We're very pleased with the outcome of the vote. Obviously, it's very telling that the commissioners, uh, the city council members have heard what we've had to say in regards to the education that we provided and understand that it's the best thing for their city, for the county, and for Piedmont as a whole. Now, in this area, one of the largest mines is the Home and Beam Mine in Bessemer City. What is being done so it does not turn out to be like that mine, which is a standing pool of water? So for us, we look at progressive reclamation. So what that means is as we are mining activities, we are also going to be doing our due diligence to reclaim that land. So that means we're going to be putting some of the rock that we bring out that we don't use in our process back into those pits so that they can get filled and then have, you know, more natural geography of that area. Um, in our mind, we will have one pit that will have some residual waters that will be there. But their goal is to make sure that we minimize that as much as possible. Now, when you disturb soil, especially in this area, arsenic is a byproduct of that. What is going to be some remediation or, or what are you going to do to not cause that? So, as you already mentioned, arsenic is naturally occurring. Obviously, we didn't put it there, but what we are going to do is as we have mining activities, there will be tests that we're going to be doing on the rock that we bring out, that we use, and that we put back, and also around the water that's in that area. And anytime we find anything, we're going to treat it and make sure that it's cleaner and better than the way that it, we brought it back out. So, when it comes to the land or the water, we're going to be doing extensive testing to understand what impact that has on the naturally occurring pieces and make sure that whatever we reclaim and put back is going to be cleaner and better condition. So at the end, whether it be 15 or 20 years, will we have an open pool of water or not? So when you say an open pool of water, uh, do you mean will there be a pit that has water in it? Yeah. There will be one. And it's my understanding, like a gold and silver mine, you can swim in it, that sort of thing, but just like the home and beam mine, it does it bear life and you cannot even go near it. Would that be the same situation for this last standing pool of water? We do not anticipate that being the case. Obviously, I don't have a crystal ball, so I can't tell you for sure that that's not going to be the case. But based on the studies that we've done and the understanding and testing that we will continually do afterwards, we will ensure that it is the safest water that it can be and that it's not doing anything harmful to the environment or the people. And also the water table, a lot of the wells are 100 to 300 feet deep, and you're going to be digging 500 feet deep. So what do you anticipate the water table doing in that area? So naturally, once you open the ground up, any water at certain levels will impede into those open areas. One of the things that we're doing, we're doing extensive studies today to understand how much of that water we will bring into the pits, what we will bring back out, and how we will distribute that to the natural streams around us. Um, we don't have the results of those testings to say, oh, this is the what we call the cone of depression or how much that will extend out. And so we're working to understand that. So one, we can educate ourselves, we can educate the community, and we can move forward to make sure everyone understands what we're going to do and how. One of the things that we have to do is have a mitigation, as you know, uh, from our mine permit application. If we do impact, what do we have to do? That's been extensively communicated. It's been shared with the state. It's been shared with local communities and, and the county. So we're doing everything we can to minimize and control, but we want to also understand and be proactive to do everything we can beforehand before we get to that point. Now, the city of Cherville, I think there's been mention of the city possibly providing the water to the mine project, but also the city of Gastonia has mentioned that they may be supplying water. Is that still in negotiations as far as who's doing the utilities or supplying the utilities? So one of the things that we had to do in this last response to Division of Energy, Minerals, and Land Resources was explain how we were going to get water to the site. We are currently working with Gaston, uh, City of Gastonia, Two Rivers, to understand how to get that water there. We are also working in collaboration with Cherival to make sure that it's a three-way triangle approach to get that water, whether it's brought in from City of Gastonia through Cherival to our site. That's what we're working toward now is making sure that it's a sustainable supply and that we can make sure that it's going to be the volume and quantity that we need. Okay. 
Anything else you'd like to say? No, sir. That's all. Thank you for your time. Thanks for interviewing with us. Yes, have a great day. If you have any comments on the decision tonight, please leave them below in the comments section and tell us what you think. Yes, guys, what did you think of tonight's decision? And if you like our segments and our news stories, Jermaine will tell you how you can get in touch with us. Yes, follow, on, uh, follow us on Wise News Network across the board. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We upload just about every week. Uh, so if you're enjoying this local news, definitely subscribe. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram.